Well, um, that's hard for me to stand up here after. Manny's given this incredible prophecy, and Bo, you've done, uh, done this incredible service of sharing future and present uh, results. So, uh, amazing. But I'm going to try in 10 minutes to share with you something that I learned over years of, of experience and things, and that is, what is the problem? What's the biggest problem for the body of Christ? What is the problem? And we're going to go through that, and I'm going to show you this, this chart here that God gave me, because it, it uh, this wheel, if you will, because it, uh, it really speaks of the problem. And we have a problem as Christians, and not many people know what the problem is. So I'm going to ask you to help me here uh, to be honest and to be forthright and to tell me how many of you tonight would call yourselves perfectionists. You have a perfectionistic tendency. Be honest. How many? Okay. About, about uh, third, third, of, third of the people. How many people really, really like being in control? Like being in control. Raise your hands. Well, that's about the same group. Um, how many people actually don't like things happening without them knowing what's coming? How many of you? Okay, okay, good. Good. I, I really appreciate your honesty. And the reason why that's so important to be honest is because right now I'm going to share with you why and what happens when you raised your hands and, you know, basically said, I'm a perfectionist, I like control, and I don't like things being unpredictable. This wheel here is something that God gave me, and it's phenomenal because it explains all of our lives in very, very quick order. And we have an inner hub, and that's the spirit. And we have an outer, uh, outer we, uh, rim, excuse me, and it has mind, will, and emotions, body, finances, and relationships, okay? Now, one of the things that we need to look at is I put up here 100% in control. Anybody that lives on the rim, okay, is, is in control. If I am a perfectionist, then am I trying to be... Am I actually working hard at being in control? Yes, I am. If, I'm, if I need control, if I need predictability, if I need certainty, I then am trying to be in control. And that's not a sin. It just is, a, it, it, it causes problems because if I'm in control, who's not? Okay. Well, why would anybody... Why would people live on the rim? Why would people live on the rim? Now, by the way, this, this, this out here, this rim, that's where Satan beats the heck out of us, okay? And that's, a, and that's a real problem. So what we need to do is we need to figure out why do I need to be in control? Well, the reason I need to be in control is because of what happened to me as a child, a baby, infant, toddler, small child. If I received any kind of pain, and everybody did, then what I'm going to do is it, there, that pain was, was actually came because I wasn't in control. See, if I was in control, there wouldn't be any pain. So we say, okay, all right, we're very good at this. We say, okay, well, if I'm in control, I won't be in pain. Uh, that's unfortunately not true. But it seems true, and we all seem to, to, to lean towards that, and we really are fooling ourselves. It's an illusion. Nobody's in control. It's all an illusion. God is in control, but he allows us to think we're in control because we live on the rim here. Now, the, the key is, the Bible says... If you lose your life, you find it. 
If you find your life, you lose it. I think the quickest way to realize that is, if I'm in control, then I, then I have found my life, okay? If I'm out of control, then I've lost my life. Adam and Eve uh, were... 0% controlled. They were totally controlled by God. They were living at the hub, okay? And what ended up happening is, is they sinned, they ate, and they went from the hub to the rim instantaneously. And when that happened, they then are having to fight this whole thing of control. So that's what ends up happening. Down at the hub, we're in 0% control, and that's where God controls us 100%. Now, that's very hard to get to because the problem is this perpendicular spoke, if you will, is, I wrote on it, trust. The biggest problem in the body of Christ is people don't trust God. I didn't trust God. I couldn't trust God because of the way that I was raised. I was an abusive father. I couldn't trust God. I one time went to God and I said, God, I want to trust you, but please don't hurt me. Why? Because my father had hurt me so many times. Well, the devil's not a fool. He wants parents to do the things that, that he gets them to do, and he does get them to do it. I have no time to explain that today, but he does get them to do it. And what happens then, we don't, control, we don't trust parents. If I don't trust my parents, then how am I ever going to trust God? I can't. And so what ends up happening is, I don't trust my parents, so I trust who? Myself, exactly. Exactly. And so we have a problem in the body of Christ with people trusting God. The second biggest problem in the body of Christ is that if I received any pain in my childhood, any pain whatsoever, and that, that can be neglect, can be abuse, physical, psychological. I was psychologically very abused and physically abused. But it also can be, God forbid, sexual abuse. It can be also neglect. Neglect is one of the worst ones. I've, I've worked with, I had a church for 12 years, and I worked with hundreds of people that were, you know, that had emotional issues. The worst one I ever had to deal with was neglect, because people don't even know that they exist. The, the problem is, any kind of pain, because of how God designed our brains, will cause us to believe things about ourselves that aren't true. And how many of you have ever had emotional upset with a spouse? Raise your hand. Okay, most of you. Uh, how many of you have had emotional upset with, uh, with your kids? Okay. What, where, was it the spouse? Was it the child? Or was it you? How many would say it's the child or the spouse? It's you. It's God's gift to us because we cannot know when we are believing things about ourselves that aren't true, that are lies, and we don't really have a knowledge of that because it's below conscious thought. And when it's below conscious thought, we can't know it until we get emotionally upset or it's called triggered. So the second most difficult and, and biggest problem is that we, uh, we believe things about ourselves that aren't true. I wrote the book to help people, first of all, know there's a huge problem. There is a very big problem in the body of Christ. Why is the Christian life so hard to live? Because one of the reasons is, is because we're wounded. We are emotionally wounded. And Jesus said, I'm going to heal the brokenhearted. Well, there must be some brokenhearted around then, right? So the truth of the matter is, is that we're wounded. And when we're wounded, we can't trust. And if we can't trust, we're going to have a problem because we're now not going to be having lots of issues with our mind, our body, our finances, and our, all of our relationships. And the other part is is that we believe things about ourselves 
that aren't true. And in the book, I have a full explanation of how God designed our brains. It, I, I was able to uh, learn about what the UCLA brain scientists were, were teaching, and it was pretty phenomenal. Because what would happen is, is that our brains are designed by God, and when we understand that design, we can then start doing something to change what we believe about ourselves through Jesus' help, and, but he does it in a certain way. He does it according to the way our brains are designed. And so I want you to realize that one of the things you can do tonight is to say, God, I don't trust you as much as I want to, so please help me to learn to trust you more. And I add to that, show me, show me that you're trustworthy. Because it's below conscious thought. So we need new experiences. The brain scientists at UCLA say that what we believe about ourselves cannot be changed except by a new experiential truth. Okay, so an experiential lie must be changed by an experiential truth. And so this whole thing that I'm sharing with you is the problem, but the solution is in the book. And that's why I wrote it. And I've done probably over 1,500 sessions with people to help them to deal with their things that they believe about themselves that aren't true, where Jesus comes in and changes it. And we also have uh, groups that we do, and the groups are explained in there called reparenting. And what they do is the group heals each other. It's pretty phenomenal to, to, uh, uh, to really see how the group heals each other. So I wanted you to see the problem. Everybody got the problem? Okay, there is a solution, and that's why I wrote the book. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.